Like I can see Jim skirting around that comment. I will not put him in the spot again. I have no investments in India, and I certainly regret it. All right, when I come to Mumbai, we will go to the disco. Okay. Uh, you you keep talking about the next bear market. Um, if that didn't happen after COVID, when is it going to happen? I don't know when it's going to happen. You watch Business Insider; they will tell you when it's going to happen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Business Insider. I'm Sri Ram Ayer, and thank you for joining us in this very special series. Budget Insider. Today we're going to be talking to a very special guest who's perhaps uh, most well known to be living everyone's dream. He retired at the age of 37, has enough money in the bank, travels around the world, and makes more money from his investments. Let's welcome on board Jim Rogers, international investor, author. Uh, he's known by a lot of things, but the most fascinating thing is how much he travels. And of course, COVID has put that to a stop. I hope. Thanks for joining us here on Business Insider India, Jim. Well, Shriam, I am delighted to be here. I would hasten to tell you that I certainly make a lot of mistakes. I've had some success, yes, but I make plenty of mistakes. And by the way, I'm delighted to see that you've gone on to bigger and better successes since I saw you last. Congratulations! Thank you so much, Jim. It is because of uh, you know well wishers like you, um, and of course all the knowledge that you impart in these conversations that we have time and again. Uh, that helps people like us grow. I mean, journalists are after, after all we just we just absorbing information all the time, and well, of the best in the business like you. So thank you again. Wait, uh, but I do have. It, wait, if it's because of me, you should send me royalty checks. Royalty <laughs> checks, of course. Uh, a royalty check for me would be an insult to your bank account. <laughs> no, okay. Let's start. Let's start. Let's start. I'm delighted you know, to be here. I'm a fan. You don't accept such small denominations. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Let's start. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. So let's start. As, as staying here in India and uh, watching this bull run, um, I have to start this conversation uh, with why you missed out on this entire rally. Are you kicking yourself? Are you like, okay, I'm watching this irrational behavior play out. I have no regrets. Uh, missing on this record bull run in India. Uh, well, I have regrets on missing out on any bull run. Uh, fortunately, uh, sure, I'm, I have, I'm participating in other bull runs. You know, China, Russia, Japan. It's not as though I'm missing the whole thing, uh, but I certainly, I have no investments in India, and I certainly regret it. And and what what was what was happening in India that made you pull out all the money that you already had? Well, I mean, I guess I would invest in India again if it got really cheap. Maybe in the next big bear market, everything is going to get cheap in in the all over the world in the next bear market. And so, maybe India, uh, or maybe if Mr. Moody does really exciting and good things for India, if he opens up the currency, if he opens up the markets, that would certainly enter, uh, entice me into India. I don't know. We will see. I think, I, as you know, I have invested in India before in the past, and I will certainly invest there again. That's in, that's interesting, and that is the crux of our conversation today. What is Narendra Modi and his government and Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman? What are they? What do they plan to do? And what is it um, that can bring fence sitters like you into India? Uh, but before we get there, uh, you, I mean, I have to ask on behalf of all market participants who are probably watching you at this moment. Uh, you you keep talking about the next bear market. Um, if that didn't happen after COVID, when is it going to happen? I don't know when it's going to happen. You watch Business Insider; they will <laughs> tell you when it's going to happen. How do I know? They're going to uh, they're going to ask people like you only. And today, I'm taking that opportunity. So, how far well, how, how far are we from the next sort of correction, a sharp correction? Uh, let's say a couple of years, a year. When is it going to be? Well, first of all, I do want to emphasize that we will have bear markets again. I mean, many people in the media and in politics say, "No, no, everything is okay now." That is totally incorrect. We have always had bear markets, and we all over the world, and we always will. So we are going to have more bear markets in the future. I sure am. I hope we both live long enough to see many bear markets. I hope we live a long time. <laughs> um, but I don't know when. The, I would suspect. That the next one will be sometime in in 2021. It might be extended to 2022, but you know it's been the markets have been going up for over 10 years. 
Uh, this has never happened. Certainly in America, it's never happened in history. And right now we have governments everywhere, especially in the U.S., printing and borrowing and spending a lot of money. But all, all politicians are doing it everywhere. So this, I mean, it's already, there's a bubble developing in some markets and in some industries, but it's not a complete bubble yet, at least the way I look at it. Some industries, some stocks are in a bubble, but many, many stocks are still down. So, so uh, let's come to the crux of our conversation today quickly. What is it that, uh, you know, the budget of India 2021, what, what can they say there uh, when you say open up the markets, right? So here at Business Insider India, uh, one of the secrets of our success has been uh, to break up uh, the, high, the high bro conversations uh, that you have with other television anchors, etc. And break it down for the young people, uh, people who are on Instagram and Netflix and they couldn't care less about the economy. Uh, but obviously, if you tell them that you could make some money right now, uh, why would they not listen to us? And therefore, we like to talk to them in a, con- in, a in a way that they like, you know, simple and, and absolute, which is why we have you here. So when you say, you know, India needs to open up its markets, uh, explain to a guy on Instagram, a guy or girl on Instagram, uh, what does it mean? And what is it that India can do uh, to get people like you once again, like I said? Well, Sri Ram, I am a, I'm a non-Indian. I'm a foreigner. So for me to invest in India is very difficult. Yes, I can do it. And yes, therefore, but, but it's complicated. If I want to invest in Germany, I pick up, I, I go on the internet and I buy anything I want in Germany. If I want to buy Australian currency, I go on the internet and I buy Australian currency. If I want to do something in India, oh, Oh, my gosh, you know, they don't like foreigners for whatever reason. So the first thing that if Mr. Moody opens your market so that foreigners can go online like Germany or Australia or America and then buy and sell, it would be a bonanza for India, a bonanza. You need and you want foreign investors. Treat them right. Amazing. I think, I think, I think that was a, a very simple, succinct explanation. It's just so complicated to do business in India and also even share market investment which is possibly the simplest way of being part of a big business. Uh, even that is complicated for a foreign investor. Of course, uh, there are reasons why the Indian government, you know, there are arguments from that side. Uh, those who say that this is hot money, it will, you know, uh, make our <laughs> currency fluctuate. There is so much at stake. Uh, we can't have a free door, revolving door, uh, at you know for the Indian markets, um, of course the answer does not lie in extremes. It's always in the middle somewhere, finding the right balance. And I think Jim has a point to make at, on that note. I, I do, I do, Jim. I want to remind you, this is 2021. This is not 1921. You know, India is a strong and powerful country now. Yes, of course you have problems, but everybody has problems, and you're worried about hot money. So what? India has got over a billion people now in a thriving economy. Let the hot money come and go. The hot money will lose money as well. Don't think they know what they're doing always. Uh, Now, I'm not Indian, so I cannot tell you what to do. I don't want to tell you what to do. You're doing okay without me. No, definitely. Uh, The idea is to say that, you know, uh, uh, this government has made it very clear that it wants investors. maybe more in foreign direct investment than portfolio investments. Uh, there are preferences, there are pecking orders, how, how this government likes its foreign investors. Uh, what are you, what, but we have seen a series of reforms that have happened in the recent past, um, like the Atmanirbhar Bharat program, which is India going towards self-reliance in, in different sectors, the production linked incentives for, and so much more that's being done in terms of stimulating uh, the supply side. Uh, people may argue, it, it's not enough. The demand side also has to be stimulated. Uh, what, is your, what is your description of the reforms that you have seen since the COVID pandemic broke out and the emergency response on the economy side, the money supply that is there, the liquidity situation in the market? Since you're not invested, uh, you're possibly able to have a bird's eye view of all that's evolving here. Well, I will give Mr. Moody credit. You know, he did a remarkable job of reforming the the tax, the GST. I mean, whoever thought that India would ever, ever, ever reform, but he did it. 
he did it. And if he does nothing else, he will be favorably remembered for that. That's a good start. But come on. I mean, what, what is he afraid of? Uh, yes, there are many investors who would love to invest there, include I, I have invested and I can do it, but it's just not easy. And you're talking about young people. If I'm a, if I'm a young Japanese or a young Brazilian or something, a young German, I don't think about investing in India because as soon as I start, I say, oh, it's a problem. You know, you think you, you just, we all know that young people don't want to start with, with complicated and difficult things. If they find out it's complicated and difficult, they're probably going to go away and invest somewhere else. So the first thing, if you want to attract young people, and India says they want to attract foreign investors, make it easy, make it easy and welcome them. Don't make it very difficult. Fantastic. So the other uh, aspect of the same foreign investors point of view, right? Uh, uh, just yesterday, uh, a big tech investor, uh, an entrepreneur uh, made a, an interesting statement. And this is, has been in conversation. In fact, uh, one of our contributors is going to be um, giving us uh, a piece, uh, an in-depth piece on this as well. In, in, the, in the next day or two, you're going to see it on Business Insider. The conversation about uh, is India really that interesting as a market? Uh, yes, it's a, you know, uh, trillion dollar economy, uh, you have a, uh, sorry, $200 billion economy, not a trillion dollar economy. What I mean is, um, it's a big economy, but if you remove the uh, top 25 to 50 million people, according to estimates, um, the per capita income goes down from 2000 to $800. Um, and, and, and that's not an interesting, that's not an exciting, uh, you know, potential. Uh, for big money to come in, and, uh, and 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 apparently a lot of American investors uh, are getting that wrong. People are looking at the top fifty million and making projections based on that. Is that something that you have also experienced? Well, of course, of course. Every, everybody looks. Everybody does the simple way. Most people don't like to really do thorough research. What you just said is actually correct, but it's an argument why you need more investment. The more investment you have the more the economy will build. Shreyan, I'm not the first, but even Karl Marx knew that you needed capital to build an economy and to build a society. So uh, Mr. Marx got it wrong about what to do with the capital, but still everybody knows that. And India needs to make it simple. Uh, you know, Shreyan, you know, you've heard of Walmart. It's a very large American retailer. Walmart has stores all over the world. It's all, they have none, or virtually none in India because India makes it impossible. India says we want foreign investors. Come, 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 come. The reality on the ground is it's not easy. Now, I cannot tell India what to do, but you call up Mr. Moody and ask him why, why Walmart is not in India and why they're in many other countries. Walmart uh, did never get to set up a retail uh, chain in India, but uh, it is definitely made a big bet on e-commerce, um, and that seems to be paying off as well. Uh, at least in the short run, there has post-COVID boom in digital economy has been um, has helped the company. Uh, we'll see how it plays out in the years to come. And I'm not making a very strong statement here only because I don't have the numbers. I don't want to fire off uh, anything that I can't substantiate at this point of time. Uh, but uh, yes, there was a there, there is a problem. Um, and, and, and in trying to be protectionist uh, and trying to protect uh, the domestic businesses, the small retailers, uh, the bigger retailers, the for bigger foreign retailers did find it difficult to enter. But uh, Jim, the bigger retailers within India, the giants like Reliance, uh, have had a free run. Uh, and, 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 and honestly, uh, with what Geomart can do, uh, the Facebook partnership coming together of WhatsApp, uh, uh, a lot of people are fearing uh, a monopolistic uh, structures getting built around different sectors, whether the telecom is now down to effectively two players between Reliance and Geo. Vodafone is a marginal player now. Um, let's say, you know, retail is getting consolidated between Reliance, DMART. Uh, Future has just gone like sold out itself. Uh, so what 
are you is that something that gives you comfort to see uh, monopolies building in different segments um as a or, or does it make you as uncomfortable as it does to me as a consumer because i know whatever i make in the shares today is what i'm going to lose as a consumer a couple of years down the line uh, shyam you know that competition is good for any economy and good for any society protectionism is is great for the people who are protected but for the society and the economy thousands of years of history have shown that it's not good a good way to develop bring in new blood bring in new capital bring in new ideas some of them will fail some of them will hurt the existing order but so what that's what that's what society and success is all about bring in those crazy guys with new ideas and let them do it and do they have to come from india or do they have to come from abroad well they can certainly come from india but if a more can come from abroad i mean there are billion indians so of course there's some smart indians lots of smart indians but there are also lots of smart foreigners believe it or not and if they come in they might stir things up uh, i am a, i know from my studies of economics history investing etc societies the more competition the better so uh, but you didn't comment on the monopoly whether it's building up or not do you see that happening in different segments in india well uh, you should read business insider you know as well as i do you know okay. as well like, as i can I see do. jim skirting around the comment i will not put him in the spot again but uh, uh, well okay i just want to say i mean we all know that if you're in with the right politicians and the right people in india you can make a fortune a huge fortune um because you're with the right people now that's the way india does it i i cannot tell india what to do but i can tell you as a student of economics and history in my view india would be better off if they opened it up more now if i were one of those guys in bed with the right politicians i would probably say don't 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 let them in we don't want competition but well you're on the wrong side of the table but that's great uh because people like me are listening and uh you know ascribing a lot of value to what you have to say so thank you for that uh so let's come to the specifics within the market right for example uh, opportunities of the future um you know um so first of all uh within the areas that you usually talk about commodities stocks bonds uh do you have preferences right now what is it, what is where you putting your money uh where you see you know uh exorbitant returns like a year down the line or two years down the line what's what's your bets right what are your bets looking like right now well speaking of india india is the largest gold consuming uh, market in the world I, i own gold i want to buy more gold but at the moment there are many people liquidating their gold because economies are bad but i plan to buy more gold i will certainly buy more silver silver is cheaper as you know on his silver is down what 50% from its all time high gold is down only 10% so i will certainly be buying more silver uh sometime in the future i'll be buying agriculture agriculture is depressed Agri- agriculture better disaster for years for decades but it is starting to revive uh for many fundamental reasons so i'm very optimistic about it. you know as i look around the world here um stocks in many countries are near all time highs bonds are a bubble bonds all over the world or have never been this expensive property in many places is a very expensive the only asset class that i know worldwide is cheap is commodities you know things like agriculture are very they've been rallying in the last few months but agriculture is still very very cheap so i am certainly i will be buying more agriculture probably tomorrow or today uh, depending on what happens um so as i look around asset classes all over the world commodities are cheap oil is down a great deal does uh, mean it, it, it can go it. down further it can go down further but it is certainly a cheap like silver silver is down 50% that's not making a top What, what what did it uh, did it excite you when india passed those agricultural reforms the three laws that have been at the a political hot potato leading to a huge amount of protest uh, did you ever think that agricultural commodities uh, you know uh, in india may be a good place once you saw that or you thought no it's okay i can wait for a little while 
Well, I, India has a history. At times, you have been one of the great agricultural nations of the world. You have the weather, you have the soil, you have the people, you have everything that's needed to be a great agricultural nation. And you have been at times in history. Uh, in recent years, you've over-regulated and over-controlled agriculture. Now, I'm not a farmer and I'm not an Indian and I'm not a politician, but I know it is still many absurd regulations and controls in India. If I were doing it, and I'm not, but if I were, I would get, if I were Mr. Moody, I would call up the Department of Agriculture and eliminate all the laws, all the controls, all the regulations, and open it up. The farmers in India don't like that. And uh, maybe because they know that, you know, uh, they're not so much worried about scale as much as this is all we have. This is, the, the land is our identity. Um, and, 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 you know, uh, typically they would be thrown out of business. Nobody, they're not eligible for other jobs. What are they going to do? Um, so that has been the argument from the other side, uh, which is now, you know, leading to uh, these laws being put on hold for the time being by the Supreme Court of India. Well, as you and I both know, yes, there are some Indian farmers who would suffer, but there are many who would benefit. I mean, there are lots of plenty smart Indians, and maybe they would buy up the other farm if they were allowed to, if they could buy up other farmers. You know, it, it's in, in India, there are no large farms. How can you compete with Canada where they have farms that have thousands of hectares when your farmers are limited? to be very, very small little places. Now, yes, yeah, some people would suffer, but on the other hand, I know Indians are smart and I know Indians and the markets there and history shows you can be a great agricultural nation. Yes, there's a transition. I would do it that way, but again, I certainly don't want a lot of Indian farmers demonstrating outside my door. Uh, you know. they're, not, they're not getting that far, don't worry. Uh, you're safe. Uh, just yesterday, we had a conversation about with a, a stand-up comic uh, who was there, and he's known to be uh, very popular for making fun of those in power. And he's like, I'm so far away from my home state, I can crack as many jokes about them as I want. Nobody's coming here, even within India. So definitely nobody's going to Singapore <laughs> to have a little bit of a strike outside your house. Um, so you're safe. So let's get back to one of the important things that you cover and that's important to India, which is crude oil. Um, for uh, Luckily for Narendra Modi and luckily for all of us Indians, the oil, crude oil prices have been very benign. Uh, they've not really run away except, you know, briefly here and there uh, for the last few years. Um, what do you think? Uh, and, and that has allowed the budget to look better than what it is. And still it doesn't, the India's finances don't look as great as much as they could have. Um, what are your thoughts on what, what is it going to be like in 2021, uh, what what is it that uh, Nirmala Sitaraman should budget for? Where is oil going to be by December, let's say? Well, as you know, the price of oil collapsed a few over the, over the past few years, and oil is now in the process of making a complicated bottom. You know how bottoms work: up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and then eventually, after the bottom is in place. Things either take off or collapse. In my view, we're making a bottom, complicated bottom, and in a couple of years, oil is going to start going higher again. Uh, known reserves of oil are in decline and have been in decline for a long time. Fracking came along and brought in a lot of new supply, but fracking turned into a bubble. You know, if you could spell fracking, people would give you money to, to drill wells. Well, now they realize, oh, I got to make money. So the frackers, that supply is greatly reduced. Known reserves continue to decline. So we're making a bottom in the price of oil. Uh, and again, I told you, read Business Insider. They'll tell you the exact but, bottom. But, I would but, suspect it's 2023 or 24, but I, my timing is terrible. Fantastic. So by the time the bottom is in place, it could be another three years and you know that's just uncertainty it could be sooner or later it could be three months okay. <laughs> I don't what, know what, what would be that uh, you know that, that, that event what, what, what could turn it around well war if there's a war of course it would turn around that afternoon it would immediately uh, turn around 
Uh, that, that was a trap, and Jim, you fell for it. So, what are the odds of a war? <laughs> I don't think there's a war coming this week. I, in fact, I would I would bet you there's no war coming in this month or this even this quarter. So that's okay. a, probably a, a ways away. I hope it's a ways away. But if it happens, then oil goes straight up. But I would suspect that we continue to make this bottom. And you say, what's the trigger? The trigger will be when eventually the supplies just aren't there because the reserves continue to decline. Fracking reserves go down. The, the amount of oil coming out of the U.S. from frackers is declining now. Now, all of this is simple economics. It's been happening for centuries, and it's happening again. Fantastic. So uh, let's talk about, uh, this might be the last question. I'm just checking the time. Yes, uh, pretty, pretty much close to the end of the show. Uh, you know, you're focused on commodities for so long. You're still saying you're talking about agricultural commodities now being very cheap. I'm going to summarize all that you said. Um, India needs to open up its market. It, it needs to simplify its processes for foreign investors to bring in money. And that is when you will return. Uh, you want to see, you know, you expect a bull run in agricultural commodities, more importantly, and silver. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong on any of those things, because these are going to be headlines very soon. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and the most important bit is, uh, are you, uh, are you fearing, uh, you know, do you feel the FOMO, this is an Instagram term, fear of missing out um, uh, on the tech bubble, tech bull run that, is ha that has happened over the last few years? And, uh, or, or have, did you invest and make your money? What, what, what has been your stance there? Well, bonds have never been this expensive in history all over the world. Interest rates have never been this low in the history of the world. Uh, in many countries, interest rates are negatives. This has never happened. So, I mean, in, in America, interest rate, in American history, I'll use America, interest rates have never been this low. So this is a bubble. It's a bubble, you know, 15 years from now, we'll look back and say, oh yeah, that was a bubble. There, it's certainly easy to recognize looking back, the bonds and interest rates worldwide are in a bubble. Uh, no, I'm talking and, about the technology space, your Amazon, Microsoft, here in India, Geo. Infosys, TCS, everything, uh, especially the COVID has put, um, you know, you know how the Fast and Furious movies, they have to press this button and tech stocks just run away. Uh, those cars run away. The tech stocks have run away like that. Uh, and do you think, uh, uh, did you get any share of that pie or uh, are you, did you not participate at all? Well, I don't like to invest in bubbles. Uh, I eventually will sell short a bubble, but I am not, you know, there's some people who are very good at investing in bubbles. They can make brilliant amounts of money, uh, but most people lose money in bubbles. The people who believe in the bubble lose money and the people who doubt the bubble lose money. Uh, so I usually, at this stage, I do not invest in bubbles. Now, if I had bought Apple, uh, back then, I'd be very, very happy. I probably, I know I would have sold it by now because I can see what's happening. If I had bought 10 cent back then, I would have sold it by now because I can see it's a bubble. But if you know what you're doing and you can play it, bubbles do crazy, crazy, crazy things and they go to prices that nobody would believe. And then when they collapse, they go to prices no one would believe. But at the moment, I am not in this bubble on either the long side or the short side. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything that I didn't cover? Would you like to Do you have a parting piece of advice for young investors who are watching Business Insider? I would hope that, that Indian tourism is going to be a great area of the future. Uh, India should be a great tourist. It is. It is already. It could be even better and I, I hope that I can find some opportunities in Indian tourism because Asian travel is going to be one of the great markets of our time. The Japanese, they, they already are, but the Chinese, the Koreans, everybody. So if, if you can and, find... And that is also a space, uh, aviation, hospitality, uh, all, of, all of these stocks are now available very cheap. And I guess that's why they got your attention. Well, but India has to make it more welcome. You know, if, if a foreigner goes to the Taj Mahal, a foreigner has to pay a much higher price than an Indian. Now, that's India. If that's what India wants, it's okay. But, but foreigners know that. 
if you make it make foreigners welcome and give them many opportunities, India, my gosh, turn. I have traveled around India a few times. It is an astonishing, I tell people all over the world, if you can only visit one country in your life, you should visit India. The people, the natural sites, the man-made sites, the food, the religion, everything, unbelievable. It's the greatest tour, could be and should be the greatest tourist nation in the world. But somebody, somebody has to make foreigners more welcome. You are definitely welcome in Mumbai. I will be there and I'll make sure that, uh, you know, you have the time of your life uh, and, 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 and you will never know where foreigners had to pay more because I put the bill. <laughs> well, all right. When I come to Mumbai, we will go to the disco. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Look forward to that. Thank you very much, Jim. That was a fascinating chat. Uh, and you. we hope to have you again on Business Insider very soon uh, after the budget is over to ask you whether you were happy with it or not. Did you get what you did? Did you get what you wanted? And the, I'm guessing the answer is already a no because there seems to be no such uh, hurry or intent in welcoming you. Uh, but hopefully we'll see that sooner than later. Thank you so much. See Everyone you next time. Watching this, broadcast. this is Sridhar Mayer signing off. Bye-bye. Thank you.